Magandang araw sa lahat. Uh, atin pong muling panuorin kung paano makipag-meeting sa mga business forum si BBM. Ayan, makikita natin dito kung paano siya magsalita, kung paano siya pakinggan ng mga ibang lahi na nakikinig sa kanya o nasa harap niya mismo. So tara, samahin niyo ako at manood tayo. Thank you uh, to uh, Secretary of Fred Pascual for uh, uh, that. Oh, please, <laughs> please take your seat. To uh, uh, bury a, a, a thumbnail sketch of uh, what uh, we are uh, hoping to achieve uh, at these meetings. Uh, we have also with us the Finance Secretary, uh, Secretary Ben Jokno, and uh, our partner who uh, is an important part of all our plans uh, because of the new legislation that uh, we are having to we are having to enact to be able to respond better to the new economy. Uh, he is the Speaker of the House of Representatives in the Philippines, Speaker Martin Romaldes. <laughs> and our ambassador, amb ambassador to Malaysia of the Philippines, uh, Ambassador Charles Jose. Our partners in the private sector uh, who have come to join us today, uh, the business delegations, the uh, different uh, uh, corporations who are here represented, and uh, together uh, with their discussions in, with the Philippine delegation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. It gives me a great pleasure to address you about uh, the uh, good things that are happening in the Philippines and how we aim to move forward and uh, to move and cooperate strongly with our partners such as Malaysia to reap the benefits of partnership and cooperation in the shared future that we are facing. I will focus my discussion on what we have done so far, what the opportunities are between our two countries and how we look forward to tapping the benefits of a deeper shared partnership for the future. Let me first discuss the Philippines' fundamentals and how we have fared amidst the recent global challenges. The Philippines has shown healthy signs of recovery from the economic downturn brought about by the pandemic. We are very proud to have registered a 7.6% growth in 2022. This makes the Philippine economy one of the best performing in the region. For the first quarter of 2023, the Philippines outperformed its peers in the region by posting the highest GDP growth of 6.4%, which is uh, right in the middle of our target of 6.0 to 7.0% uh, for the year. We rolled out our Philippine Development Plan for 2023 to 2028. The country has uh, been uh, open and uh, transparent and uh, has uh, these, uh, these discussions that we have are not simply for us to explain uh, to our prospective partners what is uh, happening and what we are planning to do in the Philippines, but also to listen to all of you and uh, to uh, hear what are, in your view, are, are the necessary changes and the elements that we have to put together so as to be able uh, to make the Philippines a more attractive investment uh, destination. Uh, the, the country has uh, come up with a development plan which uh, centers on partnerships. And one of the, one of the central elements of uh, the economic policy that we have uh, that we have uh, rolled out is the importance that we have put in the partnerships with our private sector. Uh, we have developed what we call the whole of the, which started off as a whole of government approach, wherein all the problems of, of that, that we are facing in terms of public service are attended to not only by one department or one agency, but all agencies that might be relevant in helping to face the challenge. Now, in the in the context of uh, uh, businesses and partnerships, what we have uh, come to extend that concept now to the whole of nation approach. And we believe, it is certainly my belief that the government can do much 
but the government needs partnerships with every sector of government. And the private sector plays an enormous part in, that, uh, uh, in those development plans that we have. Malaysia is still the fourth top source of foreign direct investment to the Philippines. Uh, the FDI from Malaysia is, stands at about $108 million, which is, uh, continues to indicate a uh, strong interest from Malaysia to the Philippines. However, uh, it, is been, it has been at that level for uh, a fairly long time now. And I agree, I think that it's time that uh, with the new transformation, and this provides many new opportunities, and that will give us a chance to increase that uh, level of trade that we have been uh, uh, achieving over the past many years. We have met with a number of Malaysian businesses in the key sectors of agriculture, transportation, and technology. The insights from these meetings have once again convinced us that it is the right way. Uh, we, have, uh, we have embarked upon the correct way, the correct uh, the, the changes uh, that, we are, that need, needed to be made in the Philippines to make it again a ideal investment partner for Malaysian businesses. So once again, I thank you all uh, for joining us here and for your continued interest in the Philippines and in partnering with our private sector, with our government, and in any other way that, uh, we, can, uh, that we can achieve so as to further this transformation that we are trying to bring about in the Philippines. The, the investment commitments that we have received thus far uh, are valued at around $235 million which is a good indication that there is strong interest from Malaysia to invest in the Philippines. The engagement with Mal Malaysian companies and business leaders this morning yielded very interesting and uh, what I believe will provide, uh, have a potential for mutual beneficial outcomes for both Malaysian and Philippine companies. At present, Malaysian investments already provide a valuable contribution to the Philippines and its economic development, particularly in terms of the administration's food security, and in terms of infrastructure development, job generation for our Filipinos. We continued our commitment to support not only prospective Malaysian investors, but most particularly the Malaysian companies who are currently doing business as well in the Philippines already. We have identified manufacturing, agribusiness, service industries, infrastructure, and property development, energy, especially renewable energy, and the Bimpiaga priority industries, such as the priority sectors of investment promotion for and to Malaysia. So let me focus on the policies and programs we have set in motion. This is to support our proposition for the Philippines as your strategic partner for regional and growth investments. We have broadened the range of liberalized business and sectors through the passage of key landmark legislation, such as the Retail Trade Liberalization Act, the Foreign Investments Act, the Public Services Act, and the Renewable Energy Act. Through these measures, we have opened up sectors, including air transport, telecommunications, shipping, retail, and renewable energy projects to foreign ownership. Again, this is probably a very good example to cite in terms of when we say we talk about the whole of government approach. As you can well imagine, we could not possibly have achieved these changes without a close coordination with our partners in the legislature. And that is why we consider them again uh, to be essential in understanding and promoting and finally enacting what amendments are necessary to the existing laws and to, and to enact new laws which we think are uh, more attuned to the times that we are living in. So we have made our system of corporate tax more business friendly with a lower tax rate and improved mechanism for tax and duties incentives. We continue to seek, seek ways to facilitate and expedite investments. We have re recently established green lanes for strategic investments. It is a means of 
applying the whole of government approach so as to make it easier for our foreign partners to, uh, at the high, uh, to work in the highest levels of government and to make the critical investments that, to make the critical investments that are necessary for the development and competitiveness in the Philippines. We are also leveraging our active participation in multilateral platforms to sustain and promote its economic agenda. As uh, so we have all joined the uh, RCEP, or the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, this again opens markets to the, to the Philippines. However, the fact that these markets are open to us does not mean that that is necessarily going to be a success unless we make ourselves competitive. And that competition is what will make the economy healthier. And that is why uh, the investments are necessary. And that is why the transfer of technology is necessary. And that is why the um, different, uh, what, what we, we have to redress the balance, for example, uh, between our, uh, the contributions to GDP, uh, we are at the present, uh, it is a, the, the, a large part of uh, the largest, the majority of the GDP, the contributions to GDP are in service industries, which is fine. Uh, so we are a service uh, export hub in the Philippines. However, we have to redress that balance and put manufacturing also uh, at a more even level uh, with the service industries in terms of their contribution to the GDP. And for that, we need capital intensive investments. And uh, not the we are, hot money is, is all very well for making a quick buck, but that is not what we are looking for. Uh, what we are looking for are partnerships, what we are looking for are commitments uh, on the long term. So we can, so we can make a commit, when we make that commitment, that commitment will take us through uh, the many years to our final and ultimate success. So with our participation in, in, in multilateral co cooperation, such as RCEP, we are strengthening our participation in regional supply chains with an objective of attracting more foreign direct investment. The, the Philippines looks to foster economic partnerships with our fellow ASEAN member countries, especially Malaysia, through this RCEP. The country looks at RCEP positively as a catalyst that will form more collaborations among businesses and bring prosperity to both nations. Participation in the RCEP is seen as a beneficial for both countries as it enhances market access for most goods in the region and encourages investments in vital sectors. I think that in these critical times, I think a good uh, guide would be to say that we uh, compete with each other but we cooperate whenever possible. There is significant potential for complementation between our two countries. We take pride in our key asset, our people. The Philippines boasts a deep pool of human capital. They are highly skilled and educated, talented, dedicated to take on various roles in different sectors. Uh, the Philippine workforce is uh, accustomed uh, because of our very large OFW or Overseas Filipino Worker community, we are quite accustomed to working with uh, uh, partners not from the Philippines. Uh, for, so it is something that will be a natural uh, progression of uh, the experiences that people have gained while they were working outside of the Philippines. We also sit on an ideal demographic spot. The median age of our country is 25 years old which gives us the, mo the, youngest, the youngest workforce, the most uh, uh, of, of, all the, of all the countries around the region. And they are well trained. Uh, again, they are used to working with uh, foreign entities, such as uh, foreign, co foreign co corporations, even governments, uh, and uh, have uh, gained this cosmopolitan, um, this cosmopolitan experience uh, to the advantage for our dealings with our foreign partners. So there, the, the, this is, uh, translates to immense potential to achieve breakthrough growth and greater productivity. 
higher savings rate, and increased creativity. So we recognize the important role of mid-tier companies in the regional value chain. So we invite you to offer the key advantages and the, of the Philippines as a strategic choice for expansion of the mid-tier companies. The Philippines is not only a market of 100 plus million individuals, it also provides a strategic launchpad for your exports to compete in regions like the European Union. With the European Union's uh, agreement with the Philippines, our EU GSP Plus advantages, local manufacturers and investors enjoy zero tariff access to the EU for over 6,000 product lines. So let me end with this assurance that we are committed and continue, will continue to commit our support to Malaysian investors. I thank you for your interest and your confidence, and I look forward to the Malaysian business community coming to the Philippines to get, and working together with the Filipino counterparts in partnership to unlock value, not only in our two countries, but in our entire region. So, as uh, the slogan that we have adopted goes, let us all make it happen in the Philippines. Mabuhay, terima kasih, banyak, 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 banyak. Thank you very much. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat.